This video will prepare you for the FTCE Mathematics 6 through 12 exam. Today we'll cover three things, what content will be covered on the test and how to study for it, the most likely concepts or themes you'll see on the exam, and we're going to look at a few practice questions. For our full study guide, click the link right here, or the one in the description. More information about that at the end of this video. This exam is broken into six skills or competencies. In this video, we'll swing through each competency like aisles in a grocery store, perusing topics you'll see on the exam. Finally, before we check out, we'll tackle some practice questions, so make sure to pay close attention. Let's get started. First up, competency one, number sense and operations. This is all about performing operations with rational numbers, estimating irrational numbers, solving problems involving ratios and proportions, and more. Just like the produce section offers dozens of fruits and veggies, this competency covers a wide range of essential skills. For now, let's zero in on representing relationships. Let's say that a problem states that there are two chocolate chip cookies and three sugar cookies in a jar. The following represent different ways someone could represent the jar using part-to-part -part comparisons. Two to three. For every two chocolate chip cookies, there are three sugar cookies. Or three to two. For every three sugar cookies, there are two chocolate chip cookies. We can also construct part-to-whole comparisons, since the whole is two chocolate chip cookies plus three sugar cookies equals five total cookies. For chocolate chip cookies, we have two to five. For every five cookies, two are chocolate chip. We also have two fifths, which represents our chocolate chip cookies as a fraction. There is also 0 0.4, which represents our cookies as a decimal. We can also use 40% the percentage of chocolate chip cookies. Here, let's take a closer look. Any relationship can be expressed using part-to-part -part or part-to-whole comparisons. This can also be defined as a ratio. In other words, a ratio is a comparison that shows the relative size of two or more values. A ratio can be a part-to-part -part comparison or a part-to-whole comparison. Nice work. We've got what we need from this aisle. Now it's time to venture into competency two, algebra. This section will test your algebraic knowledge from equivalent expressions to determining the inverse of a given function and everything in between. Since we don't wanna be in this grocery store all day, let's stick to one of the key topics, exponential functions. Imagine a scenario where you put $1 in your bank account and every month, the amount of money in your account doubles. This graph shows the amount of money in your account after the first 10 months. At first, starting with $1 and doubling every month may seem like it will not bring you much money. You only get $32 after five months. But the amount you get every month increases as more time goes by. And after 10 months, you have over $1,000 in your account. In just one more month, there would be over 2,000. Sweet! Notice the X values increase at a constant rate, but the amount the Y values increase gets larger every time. By the way, equations of exponential functions take the form of Y equals A multiplied by B to the power of X. If the Y values increase as X increases, then b is greater than one and its exponential growth. If the y values decrease as x increases, then b is less than one and its exponential decay. But we'll put exponential decay back on the shelf for now. Why? We've got our largest competency coming up. Competency three, geometry and trigonometry. Here, you'll need to master problems concerning the properties of angles, trigonometric functions, graphical representation of curves, the language of logic, and so much more. Whew, I'm out of breath. This is the jam-packed center of our grocery store, so it's okay to feel overwhelmed. 
Let's stick to one topic for now, the laws of sines and cosines. The law of sines is an equation that relates the lengths of the side of a triangle to the sines of the triangle's angles. This law can be used for any triangle as long as a combination of three side lengths or angle measures are known. Take a look at the law of sines equation. That's one you should commit to memory. In these cases, lowercase a, b, and c are side lengths. Uppercase a, b, and c are angle measures. And side a is opposite from angle a. Side b is opposite from angle b, and side c is opposite from angle c. Similarly, the law of cosines is an equation that relates the lengths of the side of a triangle to the cosines of the triangle's angles. This law can be used for any triangle and is useful to find the third side of a triangle when two sides and the angle between them is known and to find the angles of a triangle when you know all three side lengths. Now, this law comes with not one, but three equations, depending on the side in question. You should also familiarize yourself with these. Remember, this competency also covers things like the triangle sum theorem, proportional relationships between similar 2D and 3D figures, the converse, inverse, and contrapositive of if-then statements, and more. Check out the 240 study guide for a deeper instruction and additional practice questions. Congratulations, we've made it through the first half of the mathematics grocery store. From here on out, our domains get a bit smaller. Whew. Next up is competency four, statistics and probability, which includes concepts like central tendency, experimental and theoretical probabilities, and standard deviation. It also includes mean, median, and mode. They're all measures of central tendency or different ways of describing the center of the data. To find the mean, add up all the numbers in a data set and divide that sum by the number of numbers in the data set. To find the median, first put all of the numbers in order from least to greatest. The median is either the middle number or if there's an even number of values found by calculating the mean of the middle two numbers. The mode is the most frequent number in the data set. Some sets of data have no mode and some sets of data have more than one mode. Take a look at an example. Five students stand in a row. Their height measured in centimeters. So the data set is 158, 155, 164, 155, and 168. Find the mean by adding up all of the numbers in the data set and dividing by the number of numbers. That gives us 800 divided by five, or 160 centimeters. The median is the middle number. 158 is right in the middle. So that's our median. Lastly, the mode is just the number that you see the most in your data set. Since two of the students are 155 centimeters tall, that's our mode. Another competency down. I hope they have free samples in the next dial. We've reached competency five, calculus. This skill is all about the properties of derivatives and integrals of functions such as algebraic, exponential, logarithmic, and trigonometric functions, and combinations of functions. Let's talk about derivatives. The derivative of a function, f of x, is notated by f prime of x, or dy over dx. The derivative means the slope of the curve at x. The derivative finds the slope of a function at a given point by using the slopes of the tangent line that touches the curve at a given point. Note, the derivative of a constant is zero because the slope of the function is zero. Take a look at this example to see what I mean. The formal definition of the derivative shows how the derivative results from a limit. Take a look at this formula. Copy this down in your notes if you need it. Now taking the derivative can be done through the power rule, product rule, the quotient rule, or the chain rule. 
I won't go through each of these in this video, but remember these are rules you need to know. Nice work. I can see the checkout line now. We only have one competency left. Competency six, reasoning and instruction. This skill is a little different from the others. It dives into mathematical instruction, assessment, and learning progressions. Now, you should be familiar with important terms regarding types of assessment. Luckily, I've got a list. No, not a grocery list. A universal screener is used to gather data on all students. A diagnostic assessment, sometimes known as a pre-assessment, is used to identify students' specific strengths and weaknesses. Informal assessments happen throughout instruction, often through observation and signals from students. Formal assessments include things like quizzes, tests, and projects, or writing assignments scored with some kind of scale or rubric. Finally, formative assessments are assessments for learning, and summative assessments are assessments of learning. Quick note, these aren't the only terms you'll need to know, but understanding them is essential for acing this skill set. Wow, look at that. We've reached the end of our shopping spree. You made it. Now it's time for practice questions. We'll cover six questions similar to those you might see on the test. Ready? Here we go. When Joshua moved into a new apartment, his monthly rent decreased from 35% of his budget to 30%. If he budgets $3,200 monthly, how much will he save annually? This goes back to ratios. Joshua will save 5% of 3,200 each month, which is $160. But the question asks for annual savings, so we'll multiply it by 12 months. That means our correct answer is A. Okay, next one. Functions A, B, C, and D are defined for all real numbers X. The table below shows the values for each function. Which of the following could not be an exponential function? You remember that example of $1 in our bank account? With this as a reference, what do three of these answers have that one answer does not? A constant percent of increase or decrease? Therefore, the correct answer is D. Nice work. We're a third of the way through. Keep it up. Given the figure, find the length of AC to two decimal places. Let X represent the side AC using the law of sines. 7 over sine 52 equals X over sine 46. Now let's cross multiply the results in the equation to come to seven sine 46 equals X sine 52. So X equals seven sine 46 over sine 52 equals 6.39. That means the answer is B. Another one. A mathematics teacher determines that the median score for the most recent test was 80%. Which of the following is the most accurate interpretation of the result? To answer this question, you need to define mean, median, and mode. Got those in your brain? Then you know that the right answer is C. Median is the middle number in a data set. If the median score is 80, then it can be assumed half of the students scored below 80 and half of the students scored above 80. Two more left, don't stop now. Given the table, find the value of h prime of four if h of x equals f of g of x. Use the chain rule to find the derivative of h of x. So h prime of x equals f prime of g of x multiplied by g prime of x. Use the table to substitute values. g of four equals one, and g prime of four equals two. So h prime of four equals f prime of g of four multiplied by 
g prime of 4 equals f prime of 1 multiplied by 2. Now substitute f prime of 1 equals 3 to get h prime of 4 equals f prime of 1 multiplied by 2 equals 3 multiplied by 2, which equals 6. So the right answer is A. Last one. Which of the following statements best describes a formative assessment? Think back to that list of definitions from earlier. A formative assessment is D. Formative assessments measure what students know along the way. They should be given on a regular basis. Ding, ding, you did it. You've officially completed our stop in the FTCE Mathematics 6 through 12 grocery store and you didn't even need any coupons. Congratulations on finishing the video. If you found it helpful, give it a like. There's still plenty more to learn. Did you know that our study guide has hundreds of practice questions? If you really wanna make sure you're prepared for the FTCE Mathematics 6 through 12 exam, take the next step and subscribe to the 240 study guide. It has hours of video, so you can watch and or listen while doing chores. It's test aligned, so you know precisely what you need to study. And it has hundreds of practice questions, so you can be sure you're ready. And it has the money back guarantee. So click the link below right now to get started.